Good morning. Is there any place you'd rather be than a worship this morning? Amen. Um, I, I think we could do a sports report um, if that works for everybody. So how do you and I do yesterday? Good, good, okay. Oh, I forgot uh, West Delaware. Victory, all right, perfect. How about uh, Iowa State? Good. And um, Iowa? Victory is a good weekend. And then, uh, of course, Nebraska couldn't lose this week. We had a bye, so it was... It was pretty rough. So if you're a visitor this morning, um, there should be a card um, that looks like the one on the screen there. If you could fill that out and take it out here to the welcome desk after service, um, they have a, a mug for you. It's got a lot of different information about our church, and uh, we, we're just so glad to have you here this morning. Um, church directories, um, November 11th and 12th, the pictures. Um, those days are pretty much full. We are working on a third date. Um, still. So um, if you haven't signed up, don't worry. We're still working on it. There should be a third date coming. Um, grief share class is coming up here October 22nd. Um, that's a huge deal to, to be able to help with anybody going through a hard time. So if that's something that um, you guys are interested in or want to be a part of, uh, that's going to be October 22nd um, at 530 in the parlor. If you have any further questions on that, um, get with Susan Herman or contact Kat in the office and, and they can get you some more information. Um, last week, Leslie brought up um, the need for hats, gloves, and scarves down at the church, or at the school, I'm sorry. Um, there is now a box outside of Kat's office. If you have any used, new, or um, really just in decent shape winter items for kids, um, please drop them off there. They're going to be delivering those weekly over to the school for kids that need them. Um, if you have any questions, you can see Barry Ike. He's waving over there, um, and we can get that taken care of. Operation Christmas Child is coming up here. Volunteers are needed on the 14th and 15th of November. Um, that's going to be the packing party setup days, and then November 16th, packing party from 9 to noon. Um, also, we are going to be the drop-off location on November 18th through the 25th. So if you want to be a part of that, please see Stephanie Stocks. She's waving over here. And then um, next week, um, next Sunday from 2 to 4, um, we are going to be at the Shermans. Pray for good weather. Trunk or treat, okay? So um, if you got a truck or a car or whatever and want to decorate it for the kids, they're going to have uh, the trunk or treat going. And I think that is all I have, so let's set our hearts and minds ready for worship this morning. Please stand. Let us pray together. Lord, we offer up a prayer of thanksgiving for the abundance of treasure and abilities with which you have blessed us. Give us the desire to joyfully share our gifts for the good of our church, community, and all humanity. This is our prayer and our heart's desire. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Open your hearts to the love God instills in them. God loves you tenderly. The, the more you save, the less you will be able to give. The less you have, the more you will now have to share. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. As we have received grace and love in Jesus Christ, let us share Christ's peace with one another. Amen. Proverbs 11, 24 through 28. One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. People curse the one who hoards grain, but they pray God's blessing on the one who is willing to sell. Whoever seeks good finds favor but evil comes to one who searches for it. Those who trust in their riches will fall, but the righteous will thrive like a green leaf. Everybody, how are you today? Good, good to see you. Well, we've been talking about giving in church lately. And what I want to know is, have you ever had mom look at you and say, move over? <laughs> <laughs> have you, has there, mom ever looked at you and said, well, you need to share that with somebody? And what has your reaction been? <laughs> Well, and I've even heard that some children roll their eyes. Can you believe it? I, I just can't believe that anybody in this group would. Well, what I want to talk about is that whole attitude that's behind that giving. There is a saying that God loves a cheerful giver. That is biblical. And when I was growing up, there was a lady called the singing nun. And in my household, I had the finest Wi-Fi that was available. It was a little plastic thing that had a handle, and then you had to turn two knobs on the side for the speakers. But I loved that thing, and one of my favorite songs was God Loves a Cheerful Giver. I'm really glad the choir's not here today, because I'm going to sing a little bit. <clears throat> it went, God loves a cheerful giver, give it all you've got. He loves to hear you laughing when you're in an awkward spot. When the odds add up against you, it's time to stop and sing. Praise God. To praise him is a joyous thing. Well, I played that over and over and over in my mind. And one day when I was here at church, I had a lady come up to me and say, how are you? She looked at me and said, oh, and walked away. And I thought, good grief. This is a church. Why would somebody act like that? The next lady came up to me and she said, oh, uh, uh, uh hi and walked away and I thought man do I have my lipstick on wrong or you know what's the deal and the next lady that came up to me was a friend of mine and she said oh honey you need to go look in the mirror and when I looked in the mirror this half of my face had all fallen well I'm a nurse and I know that that can be a sign of a stroke so we raced up to the hospital 
and found out, thank God, it was not a stroke, but it was um, shingles in my ear. And I had what they call Bell's palsy, so all the nerves in my face had been affected and my face fell. <clears throat> well, at that time, my daughter was about your guys' age. And she took one look at me and walked out of the room and wouldn't come back in. And so I'm laying in bed thinking, oh my gosh, my life is ruined. Oh, I'll never be able to work again. My kid hates me. But all those things. And there's a little voice that said, God loves a cheerful giver. And I thought, what do I got to give in this situation? And I came to the last part, and it was to praise God is a joyful thing. And so that's what I focused on. Now, I still have a little bit of this but I'm not in bed all day long. My kid kind of likes me. We spent the day together. Yesterday it was good. And so what I want to say to you that one of the most important things about giving is whatever talents you have, and you guys just coming up on, on Sunday morning, look at how everybody just smiles when they look at you. You are a gift. And whatever you have, whatever gifts that you have, I just want to ask you to give cheerfully because that's what God asks us to do, and with all that he's given us, that's not very much to ask for. Even like when mom says, move over or clean your room, it's really not that much to ask for, is it? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord, just thank you that you have loved us so much and you have given so much to us. We just ask, Lord, that you would help remind us throughout this day and this week that you would ask us to be cheerful givers, and we would ask to do that in your name. Amen. Let me start with an announcement. What was planned to be a two-man show has turned out to be a solo act this morning. Uh, L. Remling called me about 8 o'clock and said he's just not able to be here today. Uh, for those of you that are not aware, L. is undergoing chemotherapy treatments. He had a treatment on Thursday and they just take the wind out of his sails. So as much as he would like to be here, He's not able to, so if things seem to be a little discombobulated this morning, and a little unorganized, uh, I apologize to you. <clears throat> Let me begin with the scripture this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 15. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor, their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourself, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their heart will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Once again, good morning. Let me introduce myself to you if you're not aware of who I am. My name is Bruce Noter and I am finance chairman. I have been a member of this congregation for about 50 years 
And like many of you, I have served this church in a number of ways, sometimes in a leadership role and sometimes not. Uh, many years ago, I was coordinator of family ministries. I was chairman of a group called Council on Ministries. Uh, I was chairman of administrative council twice. <clears throat> but there was one position that I told myself I would refuse to accept, and that was finance chairman. In no way was I going to stand in front of the congregation, talk about money, or make an appeal for you to increase your giving. But here I stand. So you ask the question, what changed your heart, Bruce? Well, the answer is in that scripture that I just read from 2 Corinthians. And to paraphrase it and put it real simply, God has been good to me. I have a loving family. I have friends. I have a welcoming and very supportive church. Uh, no less than a half dozen people came to me this morning asking what can I do to help. I've never spent a night in the hospital. I've never gone a night without shelter. And if I were to step out from behind this table, you could clearly see that the only meals I've ever missed are ones I've chosen to do so. So for these reasons, I could not think of an acceptable, an acceptable refusal to God's question that he had put before me, and that was, why not you, Bruce? So here I am again, standing in front of you to talk about money. When Phil approached me four or five weeks ago and asked if I would help out with this worship service, I did not leap at the opportunity. Uh, I'm not comfortable standing here, you know, standing in front of a group of high school kids and explaining how to operate a table saw or how to use an injection motor or a metal turning lathe, yes, okay, but to stand in front of the congregation and talk about money, I'm a little uncomfortable doing that. So I asked Bill if I agree, what would you like me to say? <clears throat> and he gave me several things. Explain to the congregation where your money goes talk about the 2019 budget and how we're doing, talk a little bit about the budget process and the 2020 budget, uh, report to you about the estimate of generosity, and update you on the Brick by Brick campaign. So I'm going to be begin with the 2019 budget. I'm going to keep it fairly simple. I'm not going to throw out a lot of dollar figures. I want to keep moving. Al and I joked a little bit about, you deserve an early out. We're going to do our, do our best to see that that happens this morning. <clears throat> this year's budget totals $256,000, and it's composed of about 60 different line items, things that we try to budget for. And so what I've done this morning is I've divided that budget into six basic categories, and again, I'll talk a little bit about each one. So category number one, wages and salary. We have the pastor's salary and his fringe benefits. We have wages for the administrative assistant, custodian, musicians, and a youth ministries coordinator. So wages and salaries accounts for 60% of our budget. Second category, apportionments. Apportionment, 14% of the budget. Uh, last Tuesday's Single board meeting, we approved apportionments for next year, and they will be slightly less than what they were for 2019. Category number three, we have to pay utilities, just like you do at home. We have an electricity bill, natural gas, garbage, recycling, uh, water sewer, water softener, and that totals 8% of our budget. Another 8% goes to what I'll call building and grounds, Dennis wants some custodial supplies. We have a, a line item called church repairs and church maintenance. We have a similar item called parsonage repairs and parsonage maintenance. We budget a little bit for landscaping. We have a contract for the elevator. We purchase maintenance equipment, uh, new vacuum cleaner, perhaps snow blower, lawnmower, things like that. A little bit for lawn care. We try to outguess Mother Nature and, and budget for snow removal. And then we also have insurance. 
So that particular section again was 8%. Next to last category, uh, departments and committees. And I'll just use a broad title here. We're talking about budgeting money for missions, money for evangelism, money for Christian education, money for worship, SPPRC, and finance. And then finally, the last category is what I call administrative expense, and that's the final 5%. We have a lease on the copier machine. We have to pay for each copy that we print on the copier. We have postage expenses. We have office supplies. We have church supplies. We have phone and internet. So those types of things. So that's a quick overview of the budget. 2020 is going to be fairly similar. Uh, some of those budget dollar figures will increase. Hopefully some will decrease. So how are we doing this year? If you had not noticed, there is a summary okay, in the chimes each month. And then there's also a summary of the financial situation on the back page of your bulletin where we try to keep you informed. If you were to look at that summary, you would see that for the first nine months of the year, January through September, our income has just slightly exceeded our expenses for the year. We've paid all the bills, and that includes apportionments January through September. If you compare that budget, if you compare the income we've received to our budget, uh, we're behind there approximately $12,600 at this point. Where else does your money go? I'll call these outreach programs. These are areas where you have designated your funds. These funds not only touch people in this congregation, but also touch people that don't belong to our church, may not live in this community, may not live in this state, may not even live in this nation. And here are a few examples. We're talking about Operation Christmas Child, Second Helpings, Vacation Bible School, Delaware County Food Pantry, Project Angel Tree, the Clothing Closet Ministry, Raised Bed Gardens, Youth Camperships, UMCOR, Heffern International, In Gathering, and Benevolence Fund, or what used to be called Good Samaritan Fund, and for those of us that uh, go back a long ways, what used to be called the Pastor's Poor Fund. So those are all examples of outreach programs, another area of where your designated gifts go. And finally, the third example is the work of the trustees. I've got a short list here, things that I could recall. Uh, early in the year, in addition to the sound booth, Reconfiguration and remodeling the choir loft. Uh, new carpet for the choir loft. At the parsonage, the trustees installed a new exterior front door, replaced some gutters. There were some electrical issues that need to be addressed. And if Charlie Dighton, the chairman of the trustees, was here, he could, he could add to that list, I'm sure. So to summarize, where does your money go? Your contributions go, one, to the general fund to pay the bills for day-to-day -day operation of this church. They go to outreach programs, and they go to the work of the trustees. I'll move on now and give you a little report on the estimate of generosity cards. Fifty-nine cards have been turned in so far, and they totaled $145,000. Now, it's not too late for you to turn in a card if you wish to do so. Uh, I think they're included in today's bulletin. Last Sunday, there was a time during the worship service where you could come forward and place your cards in those baskets. That's not the case today. So during the offering, if you care to fill one out and bring it forward, please do so. You can just place it in that offering plate if you'd like to. If you feel you want to take the card home and think about that just a little bit, you can bring it back later. You could leave it at the office. I have a mailbox outside Kat's office that's marked finance. You could leave it there. Or you could give it to Al. Any of those would be just fine. But it's not too late, and we do make use of that information when it comes to budgeting. 
Now, I want to reiterate what Pastor Phil has said a couple of times already. We do not record how much your estimate is. For example, we don't say Bruce and Marianne Noter estimated their giving to be X amount of dollars. What we do is we simply add up how many cards did we receive so we have an idea as to the response and then the dollar figures, we total those. In about a week after I begin my preliminary work on the budget, those will be destroyed. Yeah, you want to make sure you understand. Last Tuesday night at the single board meeting, those members that have a leadership role turned in their budget requests. So late next week, I'll take a look at those requests. We'll take a look at the contributions thus far in 2019. We'll take a look at the expenses. We'll take a look at those figures for the estimate of generosity and we'll sit down and we'll start roughing out a preliminary budget. And once I've done that, I'll sit down with Al and Pastor and we'll finalize numbers. And the goal is to present that to the single board at their November meeting for them to adopt that budget. Finally, the last thing I wish to talk about is our remodel fund drive. The charge conference was in early spring, January, February, I don't recall exactly when. But once you approve making modifications to this building, some of you made donations right then. And so before the Brick by Brick campaign was launched, we had $3,150 in the remodel fund. I launched that Brick by Brick campaign the last week of July. <coughs> Excuse me. I put 187 envelopes in the mail and sent them to members of this congregation and friends of this church and asked them to consider making a commitment to the remodeling effort. As of today, I have received 56 of those 187 envelopes or solicitations. I'm still waiting to hear from 131. Some of the responses that came back to me contained a check. Some of the responses that were returned to me did not include a check, but on that response form, they indicated I am going to financially support you and I will begin at a later date. Some of the responses that came back had a check, but also an indication that I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna give you more. So just to give you an idea, as of today, we have $51,835 cash on hand. The Brick by Brick campaign has raised an additional $48,685. What I call the promised contributions, this is money outstanding but promised to come, is $73,570. <clears throat> so total commitments. Now when you look at my posters or you look at that little note on the back of the bulletin and it talks about total commitments, please don't equate that with cash in hand. Okay, that's the total of the cash and the total that's been promised. So to date, the total commitments are $125,405. One or two people came to me and said, Bruce, I didn't get an envelope. <clears throat> and I said, well, that's because we don't have an address for you. Now, some of you had moved and the church records weren't updated. And I knew where you lived, so I hopped on my bicycle and I pedaled over to your house and I looked at your address. So that, that's how I was able to get one to you. But for some of you, I couldn't do that. So if you did not get an envelope, or you lost or misplaced your envelope, there's a display out here on the welcome desk that has some envelopes. Help yourself. Please take one. So to conclude, if you turned in an estimate of generosity card, thank you. If you responded to the brick by brick solicitation, thank you. For your patience, for your attentiveness, for your willingness to support me, thank you. I would ask you now to please stand and join in the singing. And I'll find it here in just a minute. Uh, hymn number 451, Be Thou My Vision.
This part, the great part of our service, the prayers of the people. Do you have, a, take a look at those in the, in the box, the prayer box. I'd like to lift up a few of these. We're doing awful good today. Don Melody, in here. Bill Welcher is here. And Joe Vapp are here. Those prayers are powerful. Al, he called Bruce this morning and said he just couldn't make it today. And I visited with Robin last night and she's got more problems. Her right forearm has two blood clots. She smiled and we talked a bit and my wife talked to her and she asked me for a prayer and I did the best that I could. We need to continue praying for Robin and for Katie and for Robin's family. They're in a very difficult spot. Are there others we need to lift up this morning? Bill? Larry Jordan, Larry Jordanson, his kids children, his wife, and Larry Jordanson. Others? Okay. Larry Gorenson and Connie Allen were added in addition to those that are in the box. Connie's in the box, and uh, Tom told me that she has her last treatment, maybe her last treatment, tomorrow. Others in there are all in need of prayer. Yes. Congratulations. so much that this church does for others. There are many others. Any others that we need to lift up? Lee Weewo. Lee Weewo. Healing. Thank you, Tom. Others? Donna, I didn't catch your last name. Donna Boss. And Donna has blood clots and she's in the hospital. Others. With that being said, may I say a prayer. Dear God, great healer of all, creator of everything, the one that has created every one of us. He's created us with a vision for great things to do. And these people that we've brought up this morning are in need of your healing grace and your love and the peace that only you can give. We thank you so much for all that you've given us. The lesson this morning is about generosity. You know that better than anyone in the whole universe. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. He came to earth, lived a perfect life, and we crucified him. Put him to death on a cross. You lifted him up 
and he sits at your right hand. And when we get there, you will remember what we've done. And we will hopefully spend the rest of eternity with you. Amen. Would the, um, would the other ushers come forward for this morning's offering, please? Dear God, we thank you for the blessings that you've given to each one of us individually. We thank you for the generosity of those in this church and the hearts that you lift up for the glory of your name. We thank you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. And may you join me in the Lord's prayer, please.
a blessing it has been to have shared this worship service with you. As we go forth, let us go forth, put God first and others second and ourselves third. In the glory and the blessings of Jesus Christ, amen. <laughs>